It is 1 p.m. in Damascus at 7 p.m. in Beijing. Hello, I'm Juanita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. There are reports of a deadly explosion in the Syrian capital, Damascus. The state news agency says civilians and law enforcement officials are among the victims. CNN reporters are not allowed inside Syria right now, so we're following the story from outside of the country. And Arwa Damon is following the story for us from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Arwa, what, what more do we know about what happened? Well, according to Syrian state television, this was carried out by a suicide bomber at a trap. Uh, while all this is happening, while we hear the rhetoric from the Syrian government of saying that this is at the hands of terrorists or armed guards, we are hearing now from a high-ranking or former high-ranking uh, Syrian official now saying actually the government's responsible. Yeah, and it's quite interesting. Uh, this official defecting from the Ministry of Defense, the senior Arwa, most... Thank you. Arwa Damon there in Beirut. Tensions between Iran and the West over a key international waterway could be tested again soon. Iranian media report the country's revolutionary guards will hold military exercises in and around the Strait of Hormuz in the coming weeks. Iran's navy this week completed 10 days of war games. White House is switching the focus of U.S. military thinking to Asia and the Pacific to counter China's rise as a military superpower. President Barack Obama spelled out a, a shift in defense strategy. He says U.S. fighting forces will be smaller and cheaper in the years ahead when priorities are expected to look very different from the past decade. U.S. now placing greater emphasis on its ability to operate in the Asia-Pacific region. We want to take it to Beijing and CNN's Eunice Yunan. Eunice, what kind of reaction has there been from Beijing? Well, Monita, so far there hasn't been any official reaction. However, there was an editorial in a Communist Party paper which said that China should not retreat from its own security ambitions in the Asia-Pacific region. At an opposition, could China's military pose? I guess we'll be looking at how much they spend on their military as compared to the United States. Right. Well, the United States definitely spends uh, more than any other country. Yes, thank you for that. Eunice Yoon there in Beijing. Well, we want to see what newspapers around the world are saying about all of this. Here in the UK, The Independent has the headline, Changes Mark Shift in Strategy and Emphasis. It's a common piece that goes on to say the cuts announced in Washington will still lead the U.S. as the predominant military power in the world, but they do point towards a reshaping of military doctrine, which will have deep international reverberations. The rebalancing also pays the way towards the new area of the U.S.'s geopolitical interest, the containment of China. In the Chinese newspaper, the Global Times, it says, Pentagon plan changes game in Asia. It's an opinion piece that gives some Chinese perspective on this issue, and it says, in front of such a U.S. strategic adjustment, China should remain sober, since it has become a firm strategic threat target of the U.S. Its efforts to improve Sino-U.S. relations have proved incapable of offsetting U.S. worries over its rise. China should try to avoid a new Cold War with the U.S., but by no means should it give up its uh, peripheral security in exchange for U.S. ease in Asia. And from the U.S., the headline in the Washington Post is Forgetting the Lessons of History. It's a comment piece written by a retired U.S. Army Major General, and it goes on to say, Obama's plan forgets the lessons of history. His objective will be, will be to win by not losing, to kill as an end rather uh, than as a means to an end. And we will enter the next year again, tragically short of the precious resource that we have neglected for six administrations, our soldiers and Marines. Now we want to bring you a, a bizarre story. An American teenager runs away from home and is mistakenly deported to Colombia by the U.S. government. Now the 15-year-old is coming home. CNN's Ed Lavendera joins us now live from Dallas, Texas with details on the story. I guess, you know, Ed, how did all of this happen? <laughs> that, that's the question that so many people are still trying to figure out here. Uh, In Dallas. In just a few hours, three judges in Peru will preside over the murder trial of Dutchman Joran van der Sloot. His uh, attorney says van der Sloot is willing to plead guilty to killing Stephanie Flores, but only if he can get a reduced sentence. Rafael Romo looks at the timeline of a case that made international news and its possible ties to another sensational murder. Joran van der Sloot has spent the past 18 months as an inmate at the Castro... 
You're watching World One live from London. A nervous wait for thousands of women. Could, could the breast implants they receive? Around 40,000 women in the UK are waiting to hear whether they should have surgery to remove breast implants. In just a few hours from now, we are expecting to get the findings of a UK investigation into possible health risks. From CNN, Paris. Deadly mudslides in the Philippines and there's more rain on the way. Let's go to our meteorologist Jennifer Delgado at the World Weather Center with more on the situation there. Hello, Jen. Hello, Manita. Uh, the situation across the Philippines, uh, it hasn't been good over the last couple of days. As Manita mentioned to you, uh, yes, just in time for the weekend indeed, Jen. Thank you so much for that. You have yourself a good one. You too. Thank you. You are watching World One live from London. It's home to less than half of 1% of the U.S. population. The next round of voting in the U.S. presidential race is just four days away. Republican supporters in the state of New Hampshire hold their primaries on Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. But that's not where you'll wow, find Mitt uh... Romney. He's campaigning in South Carolina. It's not holding its uh, primary for another two weeks, but Republicans there are big on so-called family values. With and our that... own political editor, Paul Steinhauser, joins us now from Manchester, New Hampshire, with more <laughs> on what we can expect over the next uh, couple of days. So we've got uh, New Hampshire and we've got South Carolina. We've got these uh, uh, candidates splitting their time, I should say, or their focus on these two states. Give us an idea of what kind of message or messages they're having to tailor to these two states. Yeah, because they are very different states, as you were just saying, Manita. New Hampshire, much more dominated by independent voters and libertarians up here. Uh, a little Let's talk about Rick Santorum. And uh, the, he, his message is very far, far right, very conservative. We are obviously dealing with Republicans, but we're talking about Republicans in different scale uh, and, and their conservative message in different, different scale and different sides of the spectrum. What kind of challenges will he have ahead of him? No, I think you're seeing that already right here in New Hampshire. He had somewhat of a rough day on Thursday in New Hampshire. He was heckled by some of the... Look forward to that, Mr. Steinhauser. Thank you so much for that. Paul Steinhauser there in Manchester, New Hampshire. A humanitarian catastrophe could be unfolding in South Sudan. Tens of thousands of people are displaced after ethnic groups fought near the town of Pibor in Zhongli. At least Don't forget us now. All right, Nema, thank you. Nema Elbagir there, here in London. Rioters have clashed with police for a sixth day in Cameroon as violence threatens to engulf the country's economic capital, Douala. Dozens have been injured and taken to hospital. This was the scene Tuesday when at least two people died. The euro is sinking to its lowest level against the U.S. dollar in 16 months. A reminder, if we need one, that the crisis over government debts is far from over. One euro buys less than a dollar twenty-eight cents right now. And that's down from a dollar forty-eight just a few months ago. The new low for the single currency comes as uh, European leaders get ready for high-level talks in Paris. French President Nicolas Sarkozy is hosting Italy's new Prime Minister Mario Monti. Let's get more on this with CNN's Charles Hudson. And Charles, I could say here we go again, but what can we expect from this? Uh, meeting. Well, I think, you know, that the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis is here to haunt us and probably will be for many, many months to come. So obviously, no brainer, they're going to talk about it. Uh, and again, you know, the, the, there's, as far as their concerns are concerned, you know, we know what they are. Hopefully. We all hope so. All right there, Charles. We'll see you again on World Business Day later on here on CNN. You are watching World One live from London. And Australia's cricketers have dominated the second test against India all week and they wrapped up the win on Friday. Alex Thomas here is here to join. <laughs> Alex Thomas is here to tell us all about it. I thought I was the only one that did that. Did what? That bit. <laughs> Um, yes, Monita, this will certainly be remembered as Michael Clarke's match after the Australia cricket captain. Have an extra Olympic ticket, I don't know. Well, he shouldn't try online because a friend of mine have been, has been trying online and to get any of the, the resale tickets and any of these tickets. And the, the site keeps crashing. Really? I mean, I, they, seem, they need to get that sorted. She didn't put you in Phantom of the Opera instead, or? No. Okay, just checking. No, my so, friend's it's easy very to get it smart. wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was not able to. The site crashed, and there's no customer. It's a lot of demand. Number, no one to call, nothing to. They need to sort that out. Okay, we'll look into that. Please do. You're watching World One live from London. Good story Fine. there. Here's some of the other stories that we're talking about here on World One. Tiger Woods. Ex-wife seems to be putting her $100 million divorce settlement to good use. Celebrity gossip website TMZ says Elon Nordgren is tearing down the mansion she bought in Florida after her divorce and has hired an architect to build a dream home in its place. Demi Moore, a love-hate relationship, she says she has a love-hate relationship with her body and a fear of being unloved. She gave a 
candid interview to Harper's Bazaar magazine, but one subject she didn't discuss, the recent announcement that she's getting a divorce from the actor Ashton Kutcher. And finally, women are apparently big fat liars. A study in the UK says the average woman tells about 500 lies a year about what she eats and drinks. Some of the commonest ones are, it was only a small portion and I rarely treat myself. The survey says chocolate, chips, cake, wine, cheese and bread, all the good things in life are the kinds of food we're most likely to lie about. I'm off to go eat a salad. You're watching World One, live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll update your news headlines at the top of the hour. Stay with us here on CNN.